నమస్కారం డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ సార్వత్రిక విశ్వవిద్యాలయం విద్యార్థులకు స్వాగతం ఈ ప్రసారంలో ఎంబీఏ మొదటి సంవత్సరం విద్యార్థుల కోసం మార్కెటింగ్ స్ట్రాటజీస్ అనే పాఠం ప్రసారం అవుతుంది ది లిబరలైజేషన్ ప్రైవేటైజేషన్ అండ్ గ్లోబలైజేషన్ పాలసీస్ ఆఫ్ ది గవర్నమెంట్ హ్యావ్ ట్రాన్స్ఫార్మ్డ్ ది ఇండియన్ ఎకానమీ సిగ్నిఫికెంట్లీ దీస్ పాలసీస్ రిజల్టెడ్ ఇన్ ది ఓపెనింగ్ అప్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియన్ ఎకానమీ టు ది వరల్డ్ అండ్ ది వరల్డ్ ఎకానమీస్ టు ఇండియా ది మార్కెటర్స్ అక్రాస్ ది నేషన్స్ హ్యావ్ ఎంటర్డ్ ఇన్ టు ఇండియన్ మార్కెట్ అండ్ ది మల్టీనేషనల్ కార్పొరేషన్స్ కమింగ్ ఇన్ టు ఫ్రే with the indian marketers caused concern and created opportunities and challenges to the marketers in the country the change that has taken place in the recent times and the paradigm shift from creation of a sale to the creation of a customer has changed the total outlook of the marketers and the business towards the satisfaction of the customer everybody in the business has recognized that there is a need to delight the customer to do a better job than competitor to provide a good product compared to the competitive product and in in precise terms to give value for the money these are the tasks of marketing managers today and all the marketing managers and the uh, and the marketers have come to an understanding that unless they do a superior job at a price competitively acceptable to the customer it is very difficult to succeed in the business the question is what is this marketing strategy according to philip kotler marketing strategy is the basic approach that the business unit will use to achieve its objectives and it consists of broad decisions on target market market positioning and mix and marketing expenditure levels a marketer will have to keep in mind the expected environment and competitive conditions in determining the strategy the marketing strategy is uh, the game plan adopted by a marketer to accomplish the marketing objectives of a firm to achieve the marketing objectives and to design the marketing strategy the companies have to be more towards the market analysis and uh, assessment and scanning the marketing environment scanning the competitive environment and suitably amending the policies and strategies to outweigh the competitor and to gain more and more market share to have a profitable success in the business to be successful the marketers have to know when to create large markets and when to niche when to add attributes to the products and benefit segmentation is to be adopted when to reduce the price when to expand or contract the budget for the marketing communication and promotional budget when to distribute the products by pushing the products and when to pull them up to the markets through the distributors these are the essential strategies that the marketer should be aware of besides the common strategies of market segmentation product differentiation and other strategies like product innovation the marketers have to be alert and think that always somebody is doing a superior job and they must try to excel in their marketing effort to be successful again the strategy should center around the customer and the strategy should be through the four p's of marketing that is product price place and promotion in the case of services marketing in addition to these four p's of marketing which are popularly known as marketing mix there are three more p's that is people physical evidence and process in the case of services marketing the effort should be more by concentrating on the people who are playing a very vital role in disseminating the services and taking the mission of the enterprise to the customers 
and the perception of the customers depend on the people involved in the marketing process. Today, we would like to request two experts to present their own experiences as to how they are able to market successfully in the competitive environment. We have today with us Murali Krishna Reddy, Managing Director, Green Park Group of Hotels. He will share his experiences as a provider of hospitality to the public and how he has designed his marketing strategies to succeed in the line of hospitality business. Today, I am asked to address you on the various marketing strategies that are relevant to hospitality industry. And uh, I am going to talk to you about these things with specific reference to our own uh, experiences. Hospitality industry is really unique within the service sector in the sense both uh, production, consumption and after sale service take place at the same time. In other words, there is no time lag between uh, production, consumption and after sale service, which is the case in many, many other industries. In the case of hospitality sector, this does not happen and it throws a unique challenge on the people who are manning these uh, hospitality industry sectors and who are involved in the marketing strategies. A unique situation like this calls for a unique response from the people who are concerned with providing this service. What are the factors that have to be kept in mind in order to meet this unique situation effectively? For a long time, this aspect was not considered, but of late, there is an awareness of the requirement of specific response in this sector. In our own uh, uh, establishment, in our own uh, group of hotels, we have devised our own unique responses to this unique situation where we have met with tremendous success in terms of customer loyalty and customer appreciation and repeat sales. What are these factors? I would consider the biggest, I mean the most important factor as devotion to customer. If there is, it is not just enough to say that we are a customer oriented organization. One has to go to the level of total devotion and commitment to the customer. That is how I simply say to our own people in the organization, devotion to customer is the basis for building any other strategies. Devotion to customer creates a proper ambience to create other things. The entire organization has to have flexibility in its systems, approaches, methodologies and without losing focus on the goals set and also the goal of customer satisfaction. Well, the marketing, the, this unique situation which I said can be met by this philosophical approach of the unique response, but you need to prepare the whole organization for this. It is not just the work of the marketing department or the sales department or advertising department. What you really need is preparing the whole organization to meet this unique situation and then develop effective marketing strategies. In our organization, we have developed a mission statement to prepare the whole organization and focus the organization towards this unique challenge of meeting the standards of hospitality industry. Gone are those days when hospitality industry was only a place to provide lodging and, uh, and uh, boarding, food production. It is not enough anymore. It is one of the sophisticated uh, industrial activities today where the demands of the customers are 
are very, very challenging and uh, in fact, organizations are manned by highly trained people with uh, high technologies and uh, unique uh, uh, information technology tools and everything else. Keeping all this in mind, we have devised a mission statement in our organization which reads simply as follows, customer intimacy, operational excellence, product leadership and to foster intellectual capital. In my view, all these uh, goals in our mission statement are interrelated, complementary to each other and synergistic. If you go through the, uh, all the four objectives in our mission statement, one supplements the other. The customer intimacy can be achieved only through operational excellence and at the same time me keeping a leadership position with reference to your product. The product being the experience itself, the customer only goes through an experience in your organization. That experience itself is the consumption and giving that experience to the full satisfaction of the customer is going to be the after sales service. Before understanding the marketing strategy which you want to uh, project, we should know what is the positioning of the of the your product itself or the organization itself. In our case, it is a hotel. How do you position it? You have to position it in such a way the customer perceives you as desirable, as something which is going to provide a solution to him or her. What is the positioning statement we have made? We have made a simple positioning statement. Today, people do not have time for long complicated uh, things. You have to position it in his mind. The positioning is not really it is not outside, positioning will be in the mind of the customer that is very important. What the customer perceives you as, we want the customer to perceive us as the finest value for money hotel. We are not calling ourselves the lowest priced hotel, we are calling ourselves as a fine hotel providing services which can be perceived as value for money. Value for money concept is very important in today's post liberalization, globalization scenario. If you are not going to talk in terms of providing real value to customer, the customer is not going to stay with you. So, the positioning statement to be meaningful, we thought it should communicate value for money concept in a very credible form. That is how we devise this positioning statement, namely finest value for money hotel and all our systems, procedures, people, everything else, training revolves under this pro pro positioning statement because this is what the customer expects us, this is what customer perceives us as. Then having positioned ourselves in this slot, we needed to bring in focus to our marketing strategy by fine tuning the positioning into a segmentation statement. Our segmentation statement is really, we have much clearer focus on the segmentation, namely the first choice. We would like to be the first choice of the discerning business traveler. We have defined our market, segmented our market and our positioning statement is synchronous, is synchronous with this segmentation strategy. Our segmentation strategy which is very important in the overall marketing strategy is really it does not mean only the business traveler comes to us, that is very important for you to understand. The segmentation really gives you the focus, there will always be peripheral segments which will be getting attached to the main segment. Once we focused ourselves as providing service to discerning business traveler, our entire operational structure gears itself towards this segmentation strategy. Having devised your segmentation strategy, Having clarified your positioning statement, it is very important you devise and formulate your communication strategy which becomes part and parcel of your advertising strategy. Our communication strategy which we have developed in our organization is quite simple. We did not want to say too many things, complicated jargon and all that. We simply said world class standards and real value for money. These two simple statements communicate our entire 
uh, our entire uh, desire to the customer, what we are and what would we would like to provide to the customer. A marketing strategy without a philosophical uh, foundation of the organization, without a value orientation may not really achieve much. Many times, many, many great marketing strategies, well written strategies, advertising strategies do not really do well because these strategies are not in alignment with the core philosophy of the organization. If the core philosophy of the organization, namely devotion to customer, excellence in operations, product leadership and fostering intellectual capital is aligned with this marketing strategy of providing finest value to the customer, really good results come out of it as we have seen in our own case. And finally, the marketing strategy, whatever you know, marketing strategies can be fine tuned from organization to organization. And these have always to keep in mind simple things like customer delight today in this post liberalization scenario because every organization is providing customer satisfaction. Mind you, customer satisfaction is no more a big deal. You need to do something much more than customer satisfaction. You must do something to delight the customer. That is when the customer intimacy results in and customer loyalty will be the result. If without loyalty today, you cannot really survive in this highly competitive market where there is constant pressure to meet you or in fact beat you. Then there has to be another element in your strategy is care and concern at all levels. It is all the more important in hospitality industry because if you do not have the care and concern for your customer, it would not really translate into success. Then there has to be competence in the operations at all levels. Finally, if you want to be you have implement a successful marketing strategy through value for money concept, the cost control has to become the lifeblood of the organization. Effective cost control measures at all levels will go a long way to give credibility to your marketing strategies. Finally, whatever you do at all levels, the people, your uh, media strategy and everything should have excellence in communications. Unless you communicate precisely, because you cannot really take uh, huge spaces in media today, very expensive, your media strategy and communication strategy has to be precise, has to have excellence. Let me now request Sri S. K. Madhur, Executive Director, Management Information Systems, APSRTC. Today, we are going to talk about the marketing strategies adopted by APSRTC, the Andhra Pradesh State Road Transport Corporation, which is the largest state transport undertaking in India catering to, catering to passenger transportation. With a fleet of about 18,600 buses, APSRTC now is able to provide passenger services of various classes and various types to all its commuters. While doing so, various kinds of products have been developed by way of AC sleeper coaches. Then we have the metro liner in the city, the high tech buses flying over the district routes, intercity routes. Then we have the express, gramani, uh, ordinary and various types of services. All these services cater to different classes of society and just different levels of income, uh, people in different strata of income. Now, we all know that transport is a service which links economic activities which are spatially dispersed. The, by this, what I mean is goods and services and likewise people have to be transported over distances from one location to another. The transportation activity is very important in the economic development of any country. And we also know that Transport infrastructure or rather infrastructure per se is very vital to the development of any economy. When we talk of transport infrastructure by, by way of bus depots and uh, bus stations, we all know that the small operator invariably cannot go in for such massive investments in transport infrastructure. Therefore, it is mainly the public transport undertakings under the state which come into forefront in order to provide transport infrastructure. 
Well, to give you a few statistics about APS RTC, I would draw your attention to the following facts. APS RTC today has 18,600 buses, a fleet of about 18,600 buses. It employs 1,30,000 men, the largest employer among state transport undertakings in the country. It has 675 bus station buildings, 1,797 bus shelters spread all over the state. Uh, we have at APS RTC totally 209 bus depots, all of which have been totally computerized. All the activities at the bus depots have been totally computerized. We extend to the society total uh, worth of concessions, which is about 115 crores of rupees, by way of free travel to students below 12 years of age, free travel to physically handicapped persons, journalists, etc. And of course, concessional passes to students above 12 years of age. And uh, likewise, we do not go back in undertaking any activity which is felt as uh, necessary to aid the development of the state. One aspect of computerization in APS RTC, which I, which I mentioned, was computerization at the grassroots level, the depot level. Now, we have in plan a total system called the depot management system, which is depicted in the diagram which you are able to see now, where at the grassroots level, the depot level, we, will, we already have a computer system whereby the multi-terminal system is able to take care of five different software modules to cater to the traffic, the maintenance, the stores inventory, the financial accounting, and the personnel systems. Not only that, we have developed what is called uh, Project MIS software, which enables the depot managers and managers at higher levels to get information for decision making in the appropriate form. We are later going to develop decision support systems, the DSS component and the EIS component, the executive information system component. Not only that, as you see at the left top corner of the chart, we are going to provide buses with handheld, the conductors with handheld ticketing machines or dashboard mounted machines inside the bus for the driver to issue tickets. And later, of course, it is our intention through GPS systems and GIS systems to make the depot managers operate their fleet very effectively, punctually, and of course, to the advantage of commuters. Coming to the marketing strategies and the customer orientation adopted by APS RTC, we have a couple of schemes which primarily are meant to attract the customers to our services. Number one, we have computerized reservations at almost all major bus stations. Uh, right now, of course, we are providing computerized bus stations with remote terminals in the twin cities of Hyderabad and Secunderabad so that the passengers could go to their residential, uh, need not come out of their residential locality. All they have to do is walk across to the passenger reservation terminal located in that locality. Likewise, for customers, we also provide various other facilities such as reservation by telephone. You can book your seat by telephone, and then you will have to, of course, buy the ticket before you make the journey, which you can do at the bus station from where you start your journey. Likewise, we have on select routes a facility whereby return journey ticket earns you a discount of 10%. We also have what is called the jet ticket, the Jubilee Express ticket, whereby travel for a week or 10 days is allowed at a certain charge which works out to much lower than what it obtains if you take journey, tickets for individual journeys. Yet another scheme which facilitates customers and which is customer oriented is what is called the CAT card or the Concessional Annual Travel Card. This particular card which is obtained by paying rupees 150 is an identity card which distinguishes the CAT holder, the Concessional Annual Travel Card holder from others and earns him 10% discount on every journey he makes. Not only that, he is given priority in reservations and in booking of seats over other passengers. So this scheme has become very popular and we have been able to till now sell 
35,000 cards, though the scheme was started just a few months ago. As you all know, in marketing, we have to basically take care of four aspects, four Ps. That is the product, the product in its design and development. What kind of product do you design and develop and give it to your customers? Now here, we have the products namely by way of different classes of service, which are, of course, the AC sleeper, which was introduced for the first time in the country in the history of our nation. And uh, we take pride that we have introduced these coaches which operate on routes like Bangalore, Shirdi, and uh, Puttaparthi. The second aspect, the second P, is the price at which we offer our service. Now, we have been trying to make attempts to bring down various costs. So we are becoming cost competitive in order to pass on the benefit of this cost reduction to the customer. The third P, the third P is the promotion, promotion aspect. Now, how do we pr promote the product? We go in for, of course, a few advertising campaigns. We also do a lot of publicity through our ticketing agents. Lastly, the fourth P, package. Now, package, of course, is the way you present your product. The package refers to how attractive or how aesthetic you make your product, how likable it is to your customers. Now, in doing so, of course, we went in for different uh, color schemes for our buses. We do a lot of CAD-based bus body designing using the computer-aided design software and uh, hardware tools. Not only that, we go in for uh, comfortable seating so that, like the airlines, if we give them comfortable seats, we feel that the ergonomics is better and it tires the passengers much less over the overnight journeys. Yet another aspect is, of course, the most important one, safety in transportation, which is very important to customers. And here, we provide intensive tra training to our drivers, not only through uh, training schools which are located at zones where we give hands-on kind of training over the roads on buses, but we also have been using the driving simulator, the computer-based driving simulator where drivers are trained in order to condition their attitudes towards safety where they are exposed to all kinds of traffic complexity. We came to know regarding the marketing strategies of APSRTC. All excellent and successful marketing companies have been able to successfully market their products and could enjoy the confidence of the customers because of the quality product or service they provide. The marketing success depends on the design of the marketing strategy and also the changes that are required to be brought in the strategy from time to time, considering the dynamics of marketing operations. There is a need on the part of the marketers to scan the environment from time to time, that is marketing environment, product environment, consumer environment, and competitive environment. Customer satisfaction or customer delightedness is concomitant for any business operation to be successful and to stay in the market in the long run. Mi Suchanalu, Salhalu, Afanistana. Mi Suchanalu, Salhalu, Makutelichevals Naturanama. Director, Audio Visual Production and Research Center. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, Open University. Professor G. Ramreti Mark. Road number 46. Jubilee Hills, Hyderabad. Aitu Sunna Sunna, Sunna Modu Modu. PG Vidhyarthilakosam Maths Nodi Projective and Injective Modules Chodandi In 
in this lesson we study projective and injective modules. Projective and injective modules they play a very important role in the theory of modules. The concepts of projectivity and injectivity they are dual to each other, they are categorical concepts and universal in the nature. For our purposes a ring means a commutative ring with one and a module is always unitary. A module P is called projective if and only if given any modules M and N and an epimorphism F from M to N and a homomorphism G from P to N, G can be extended to a homomorphism or there exists a homomorphism from P to M denoted by G bar such that this diagram is commutative that is F circle G bar is equal to G. The diagram is a commutative means the existing roots from P to N namely G and F circle G bar both roots are same. We indicate this by say by putting a equality sign in the middle. F is an epimorphism from M to N implies that N is a quotient of M that is N is isomorphic to a quotient M by K. The definition reads like this and a module P is projective if and only if given any homomorphism G from P to a quotient M by K of M can be factored through the natural epimorphism alpha from M to M by K that is there exists a homomorphism G bar such that alpha circle G bar is equal to alpha circle G bar is equal to G. For the sake of simplicity and convenience we introduce the concept of M projectivity that is an R module P is M projective given any epimorphism from M to N and any homomorphism G from P to N it can be factored likewise that, like, like this that is there exists a homomorphism G bar from P to M such that this diagram is commutative. The definition of projectivity and M projectivity they are linked by that P is projective if and only if P is M projective for every M. P is projective if and only if P is M projective for every M for every R module M. We illustrate this definition by means of few examples. The additive group R plus is always an R module and R plus is shown to be a projective R module because you take any module M and any N R and G any homomorphism from R to N. Now the element G1 is in N since F is an epimorphism there exists an X naught in M such that F X naught is equal to G 1. Now you define G bar from R to M by putting G bar A is equal to A X naught for any A in R. Now F circle G bar at any A this is equal to F of G bar A is equal to f of a x naught. So, this is equal to a f x naught. So, this is equal to a g 1 that is equal to g a 1. So, that is equal to g a. So, f circle g bar is equal to g that means r is m projective and as m is arbitrary follows that r is r projective the additive group. Now, let us recall the definition of a free R module. An R module M is called a free R module if it has a 
free generating set x1, x2, x free generating set x that is if there exists a subset x of m such that every element x of m can be written as a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus etcetera an xn for some x1 x2 xn in x and a is in r. If the module m has a free generating set, we say m is a free r module. For instance, the L2 group r plus being r module is a free r module because the singleton 1 acts as a generating set for r. If n is any positive integer r n namely the set of all ordered pairs a 1, a 2, a n, a i belonging to r is a free r module and also any vector space v, vector space v over a field or a field is a free f module because any basis of v serves as a free generating set for v. Generalizing this example, if x is any infinite set and R x if it denotes the set of all mappings f from x to R such that f is almost 0. f is almost 0 means f x is equal to 0 for all x in x except possibly for a finite number of x's. If R x denotes the set of all such mappings under point wise addition and point wise scalar multiplication R x is a R module, R x is a R module and also if for each x in x, if you denote g x the mapping from x to R given by g x at y is equal to 1 if y equal to x and 0 if y not equal to x. Then the family g x, x running in x acts as a free generating set, free generating set for the module R x because R x is a free R module. Not only this, any free R module can be obtained this way that is precisely if M is any free R module, M is any free R module then for some suitable set X, M is isomorphic to R X. So, free R modules means modules of this type R X for some suitable set X. Now, we show that uh, any free module is uh, projective before going that before going to prove that we state one result namely if uh, p is an r module and if p is equal to the direct sum of pi of a class of r modules pi i belonging to i then p is projective or m projective if and only if p i is m projective for each i. The direct sum of a family of modules p, p equal to the direct sum p i, p is m projective if and only if p i is m projective for each i. Using this result, we first we have observed that r is r projective. In fact, R is projective, so R projective also. Now, we show that any free R module P is projective, that P be a free R module. As I have mentioned above, we can see that P is, I, is isomorphic to R x for some suitable set x. And also, R x is equal to the direct sum R x x belonging to x where each R x is equal to R. We have seen earlier that each R x being R is 
m projective. In fact, it is projective therefore, m projective for any m, m projective for any r module m. So, the direct sum r x is m projective. So, p being isomorphic to r x, it can be observed that uh, any project any ma module isomorphic to a projective module is projective. Therefore, p is uh, m projective, therefore, p is projective. Thus, any free module is uh, projective. Another important result, which is a characterization of a projective modules, is the following a module an R module p is projective if and only if it is the direct sum end of a free R module, P is projective if and only if it is the direct sum end of a free R module. We indicate a proof for this. Suppose P is projective, consider P because any projective any, any module P is a homomorphic image of a free R module, there exists a epimorphism from R x to P. In fact, any module is a homomorphic image of a free R module, P any module, therefore, there exists epimorphism R x to P. Let G be any, let I identity map from P to P. Now, because of the projectivity, there exists a mapping g bar from p to r x such that f circle g bar is equal to identity. f circle g bar is equal to identity implies g bar is a monomorphism, g bar is a monomorphism. That means, g bar p is isomorphic to p. Now, we claim that r x is the direct sum g bar p circle plus kernel f. For, for that we show that g bar p intersection kernel f is equal to 0 and that is obvious because if you take any x in g bar p intersection kernel f, <coughs> x can be written as g bar y and because x is in kernel f you get 0 is equal to f x that is equal to f of g bar y and f g bar is identity that is equal to y. So, you get y is equal to 0 substituting this you get x is equal to 0. So, g bar p intersection kernel f is equal to 0 and also any z in r x can be written as z is equal to g bar of f z plus z minus g bar f z. You can see that g bar f z is in g bar p and z minus g bar f z belongs to kernel f. Therefore, r x is equal to the direct sum of g bar p plus kernel f. Converse also you can conversely assume that p is a direct sum end of a free r module. That means, there exists a module q such that p circle plus q is equal to r x. That means, every element in r x can be written as every element x in r x can be written as x plus y x 1 plus x 2 where x 1 is in p, x 2 is in q. Now, to show that uh, p is uh, projective, let m and n be any modules f epimorphism from p to n, okay. r x to p you have the projection map by 1. So, you define r x to n a map g bar by g bar is equal to g circle pi 1. That is, this g bar makes g bar sends every element x 1 plus x 2 to g x 1. Pi 1 is the first projection, g bar of any element in R x can be written as x 1 plus x 2. So, g bar of x 1 plus x 2 that is equal to g x 1. Now, g bar is a homomorphism from R x to n, <coughs> R x to n. So, you define g all right, define g dash 
from R x to m, define g dash from R x to m as g dash is equal to the restriction of g bar to p. G bar is a, g bar is a mapping from R x to n. So, you consider the restriction of g bar to p, you call it g dash. This g dash meets our requirement. Thus, you get p is projective. <coughs> this result immediately gives you that any direct sum end of a projective module is projective. Any direct sum end of a projective module is projective. Because any R module is a homomorphic image of a free R module, we immediately conclude that any module is a homomorphic image of a projective module. This should not lead you to conclude that uh, any module is uh, projective. That is not true because, in fact, if you take any finite abelian group G, that is not uh, projective because G can be, <coughs> if G is a projective module, it must be a sum end of a free R module. That means, G must be a uh, sum end of Z x g must be a direct sum end of z x and whereas, uh, every element in g is of finite order and uh, no element in uh, z x except the identity element is of uh, finite order. Therefore, uh, g cannot be projective. Also, you may suspect that uh, you may or you may, you may conclude that every because we have proved that every project every free module is projective, uh, you may ask for the converse. Uh, one may conclude that every is every projective module free. See, there are examples of projective modules which are not free. For instance, you consider the ring Z6. Z6, the additive group is a projective module because we have seen that for any ring R plus dot, the additive group R plus is R projective. Therefore, Z6 is projective and Z6 is also isomorphic to the direct sum z 2 circle plus z 3. Z 2 z 6 is projective, z 2 and z 3 they are direct sum ends of z 6. Therefore, z 2 and z 3 they are projective, but uh, none of them is uh, free z 6 module. Therefore, every projective module need not, need not be free. Now, let us go to injective modules. An R module i is called injective If given any modules m and n with a monomorphism f from m n to m and a homomorphism g from n to i, this g can be extended to a homomorphism from m to i g bar. This diagram is commutative, that is i is injective, if every monomorphism from a sub from a module n of m is such that given any homomorphism g from n to i, there exists a homomorphism from the, ho from the module m to i g bar such that this diagram is commutative. Here, f is a monomorphism means that uh, n can be identified with uh, f n, f n is a sub module of m. That means, n can be identified with a sub module of m and the definition can be in the definition of injectivity, the n can be replaced by a sub module. That is, the definition looks like this. I is injective if given any sub module n of m, given any sub module n of m and the inclusion map a sub module means and any homomorphism g from n to i, it can be extended to a homomorphism g bar from m to i. Here the sub module means it is the inclusion map, n to m i, i is the inclusion map. For the sake of convenience and presentation in proofs in certain cases, just as in the case of uh, projective modules, we introduce the concept of uh, m injectivity. 
So, we say I is m injective or relative to uh, I is uh, injective relative to m if every homomorphism from a submodule n of m can be extended to a homomorphism from m to i. Every, if every homomorphism from a submodule n of m to i can be extended to a homomorphism from m to i. See, the definition can be explained like this n m every homomorphism from a submodule n to i can be extended to a homomorphism from m to i. Then we say i is m injective and if i is m injective for every m we say i is injective. We, we illustrate this definition by means of few examples. The 0 module is always injective, this is trivial and any vector space V or a field F or a field F is injective. Another important example is given by the concept of divisible groups. An abelian group D, D is an abelian group. Any abelian group D is called divisible if given any y in D and any non-zero integer n, there exists a x in D such that n x is equal to y. For instance, the group z, the additive group z is not divisible. is not divisible. For instance, given 1 in z and 0 not equal to 3, there is no x in z such that 3 x is equal to 1, there is no x in z such that 3 x is equal to 1. So, z is not divisible, but the group q plus, the group of rationals the relative group of rationals is a divisible. An important characterization of a divisible groups is an abelian group is a divisible if and only if an abelian group D is divisible if and only if D is injective. So, because you have lots of examples of divisible groups, you have lots of examples of injective modules. <coughs> we have mentioned a result regard concerning projective modules, that is P is projective if and, if and only if, if P is a direct sum of, if P is a direct sum of modules P i then P is m projective if and only if each P i is m projective. Dually for the case of uh, injective modules what we have is if m is equal to a direct sum m a, a running in a, then a module i is m injective if and only if i is m a injective for each See the duality is like this. The case, the case of projectivity, in the case of projectivity, P is projective means it extends a homomorphism from P to a quotient of m by something to a quotient of m. That means m by k for some k to the module m. It extends a homomorphism from P to a quotient to this thing. Given any homomorphism from P to a quotient it extends to the m, projectivity does that. Whereas, injectivity, it extends a homomorphism from a submodule into i to a homomorphism from the whole module m to i. And a result which is true 
both in the case of uh, projectivity and injectivity is the following. Say, suppose uh, P is an R module and M any R module, say and K a sub module of M. P is projective, M projective, assume P is M projective. This implies P is K projective and M by K projective. In the injective case, assume that P is M injective. This implies P is M injective, P is K injective and P is M by K injective. So, this is a result which is valid for both projective and injective modules. Another point regarding duality is we have seen that any module P is a homomorphic image of a projective module. Usually, any module P can be embedded in a injective module. For projective modules, it is a quotient uh, that is any module P is a homomorphic image of a projective module. In the case of injectivity, it is a sub module, any P can be embedded in a injective module. Let us conclude what we have discussed in this lesson. We have introduced the concepts of projectivity, injectivity. We also have introduced the auxiliary concepts of M injectivity and M projectivity. We have illustrated them by means of several examples. The important one among them is every free module is projective. We also have seen that the converse is not true. We have discussed several theorems which act as tests for projectivity and injectivity. The important one among them is Bayer criterion for testing injectivity. <laughs> మీ సూచనలు సలహాలు మాకు తెలియజేయవలసిన చిరునామా డైరెక్టర్ ఆడియో విజువల్ ప్రొడక్షన్ అండ్ రీసెర్చ్ సెంటర్ డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ ఓపెన్ యూనివర్సిటీ ప్రొఫెసర్ జి రామ్రెడ్డి మార్గ్ రోడ్ నంబర్ ఫార్టీ సిక్స్ జూబ్లీ హిల్స్ హైదరాబాద్ ఐదు సున్నా 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 మూడు మూడు